Welcome to Chemistry, everybody. I am Mrs. Gregory. And I'm Mr. Sustin. And we're going to tell you a little bit about this fascinating science that we both love. And we hope you will as well. So what is chemistry? Well, it's the study of matter, all of the matter in the entire universe, uh, little teeny tiny invisible things like electrons, and protons, and all the things they make, like elephants and trucks. <laughs> and we're going to look at the interactions between matter and energy, because that's really where the neat stuff in chemistry comes into play. Um, as chemists and chemistry teachers, we want to know what kind of reactions can happen. Can we make new substances? Can we break things apart? And that's what chemistry is all about. And there's basically, there's two broad types of any kind of science. Um, the two broad types of chemistry are pure chemistry, which is just the pursuit of new knowledge, uh, trying to make discoveries. And then there is applied chemistry, which is the, the technology, the advancements in society that we make with that new knowledge. Um, like x-rays was a new discovery. And we made x-ray machines uh, that dramatically advanced science uh, and medicine. Yeah, and at various points in history, the need has arisen for new substances. So their chemists uh, discovered nylon. And this is this really cool reaction. You pour these liquids together, you pull some out, and wow, it's a long, stringy thing. So what could we do with that? Well, we could weave it into fabric, and we can use that to make all sorts of stuff, windbreakers or SG sportswear and, and all sorts of things like that. So taking chemistry to our everyday life is where we differentiate applied from just the pure search of knowledge. But there isn't just one kind of chemistry. Chemistry isn't one thing, it's many different things, many different fields. Mm -hmm. And actually we could have had nuclear chemistry in here as well. Uh, in our class, for in a chemistry one class, we'll be typically focusing on analytical chemistry and inorganic and just kind of building a basis of understanding. We'll touch on organic and maybe a little biochem and some physical chem as well. But we want you to start off the year or go through this year and get a nice foundation in your understanding of chemistry so that you can then go on like we did and study it in college and have so much fun doing chemistry for the rest of our lives. We study chemistry for a multitude of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, it's the coolest science. Oh, yeah. um, but it helps us explain what's going on out there in the natural world. Whether you are a marine biologist studying population changes, there are uh, consequences of acidification of the ocean. And you might not think you're a chemist, but you are going to be connected to chemistry for the rest of your life. And it has impacted us so much in our everyday lives. I mean, we, all our modern conveniences really uh, tie back to chemistries. And many, many careers are now related to science. And certainly many of those careers are related to chemistry. We need to be informed as citizens so that we know the impact of substances on our environments in our everyday life. I mean, we should make informed decisions about what medications we're taking, for instance, and things like that. And I mean, very least, you know, we could just be awesome at Jeopardy if absolutely if and we it, know some chemistry. You never know when you'll find yourself on a game show. Where chemistry happens? Chemistry happens yes. everywhere. <laughs> yes, uh, it happens everywhere in medicine and biotech. Uh, everybody knows someone who's diabetic and needs insulin, and um, that insulin is, is is synthesized in a chemistry lab somewhere. Here in Geauga County, we know a lot about agriculture, and when we talk about fertilizers and pesticides, we're talking about chemistry. Uh, out there in the environment, that list is endless. Uh, we have all this, all this stuff going on with the natural gas and oil drilling. Uh, people are afraid that their uh, drinking water will be contaminated. Well, hey, that's, that's chemistry. Uh, global climate change is linked to chemistry. And out there in the universe, and answering some of the big questions about where did all this come from, uh, that's chemistry. And where can we find the substances that we're running out of here on Earth? I mean, it'd be nice if we run out of some basic minerals and some basic elements, if we could have a source of that elsewhere. I think that's probably what uh, uh, 
the science fiction writers uh, talk about, but you know, in your lifetime, that may be something that is, is very important and necessary. So who does this chemistry stuff? Well, there's been a long history of that, back from uh, the times in BC to the alchemists where uh, chemistry was sort of this mystical, magic uh, phenomenon, uh, to the development of chemistry as a true science as we identified gases or discovered gases and realized that hmm we can measure some of these things we can put things together we can take things apart there's all sorts of reactions that happen we can make new substances and there are you know hundreds of big names in modern chemistry taking us all the way up to the nuclear chemistry and physics uh, going on now with the Higgs boson and, and what's inside an atom, what's inside the protons, neutrons, and electrons that you might already know from your uh, previous study. Uh, and then how do chemists or any scientists talk to each other? Right. Uh, hey, we follow each other on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, all, all, of, all of that discovery uh, around uh, landing the new rover on Mars, uh, that was streamed live across the planet. Other scientists from other countries were able to share in the joy of, of this new opportunity uh, through the internet. And scientists collaborate and work with each other and talk with each other across the globe on a daily basis to share ideas and work together. So it's not just that only one person is doing an experiment on a given topic. There are probably hundreds of people across the world that are doing experiments on a given topic. And why repeat all that work when you can easily connect with others? Now, if you look at uh, Antoine Lavoisier here in this picture, for his communication, he was writing letters. He was producing journals, perhaps. He was doing presentations, but to a very small group of people because communication was difficult back then. And now we've learned so much and developed so much more in part because of the speed of our communication. So how, how is science actually conducted? And in your textbook, you're going to follow along. And this is the scientific method. And you guys have heard this in every science class you've taken ever. But it's not just for scientists. This is a cyclical process of, of making some observations of something that just doesn't look right or work right. Generating some questions generating, about yes. that. Try testing it out to see, you know, okay, well, if that happened, I wonder why, how can I, how can I tell, how can I investigate that? And, you know, we may think of somebody in a white lab coat working in a lab, but no. everybody's using this process. Right. It could be a guy wearing some overalls working on his tractor, um, trying to get that piece of machinery to work correctly or fixing a refrigerator or an electrician or plumber or any everyday kind of person. And that's it. And that's it. That's, I mean, that's chapter one in a nutshell. Um, there are resources there on Moodle. And uh, go ahead and explore those and beef up some of your knowledge. And uh, we'll be looking for you in chapter two. And we'll be working with you as you are learning. And we'll, we will be learning ourselves as we go through this year. So good luck. We hope you're excited about starting. Uh, we know we are excited about working with you this year.